Hey guys, how are you? Did you miss our science lessons? Mm, yeah, me too. Okay, as usual, uh, let's start with our video about matter. Okay? Mm -hmm. On Earth, everything is made up of matter. It's everything around us. Heavy rocks are made of matter, and even things we can't see, like air, are made of matter. Even your friends are made of matter. If it takes up space, then it's matter. Matter is made up of atoms and molecules, which are too tiny to see unless you have a very strong microscope. They're like tiny little building blocks that make up everything around us. To give you an idea, there are almost 10 octillion water molecules in a single drop of rain. That's a lot of zeros. Matter can be any size. It can be the size of a rocket, as huge as a mountain, or as tiny as a grain of sand. Different objects have different amounts of molecules and atoms. The kinds of atoms and molecules in matter make some things shiny, make some things heavy and hard, and make some things light and soft. There are three main states or kinds of matter, solid, liquid, or gas. A solid is something that holds its shape. Solids can be hard like a toaster, a pencil, or a cricket bat, or they can be soft like a rubber toy or a piece of clay. A solid means that the atoms are packed in really close together so they can't move, which means the object holds its shape. A liquid, on the other hand, will always change its shape. It changes shape to fit the shape of the container it's put in. A liquid can flow, which means it can be poured. So if you pour water into a fishbowl, it moves to become the shape of the fishbowl. Liquids are sometimes thick like honey or thin like water, but no matter what, they'll always flow. Atoms in a liquid can move around, but they'll stay together. A gas, like a liquid, takes the shape of the container it's in, but will also spread out to fill the container. When a balloon fills with water, the water fills up the bottom first, but when you fill it with a gas, the gas fills the whole balloon. Sometimes, matter can change states, usually by changing its temperature. If you heat ice cream, it will melt and turn to a liquid. If you make the ice cream cool again, it will then turn back to a solid. Water is unique because it's the only thing on Earth that naturally occurs in all three states, as a solid, as a liquid, and as a gas. And it can change states quite easily. Water in its most common form, as a liquid, covers about 70% of the planet. It also has no taste, smell, or color. Water constantly changes states in nature. In very cold places like the mountains, the water freezes into ice and snow. The sun then warms the frozen water, causing it to melt to liquid water. As the sun continues to heat it, the water begins to evaporate. In warmer places, the sun heats up the water faster, causing the water to evaporate more quickly. The warmer the environment, the quicker the water will evaporate. Heat from the sun warms the water. This turns the liquid water into a gas or water vapor, which rises into the air. This is known as evaporation. As the water vapor moves up higher and higher into the sky, it starts to cool down, turning back into tiny droplets of liquid water. This is known as condensation and is what causes clouds to form. As these droplets of water join together to become bigger drops, they become too heavy to stay in the air and fall back down to earth as rain, hail or snow. This is known as precipitation. Hail and snow are water as a solid, but they won't stay this way. Once on the ground, 
they'll eventually warm and melt and turn back into a liquid. This water is then evaporated up by the sun and this goes on and on. In nature, the way water keeps changing states is called the water cycle. Rain is part of the water cycle and from it we collect water to drink and use in our homes. Please remember, love every drop. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed our video. And so now, do you see the picture on the left? Yeah, it's for it's for water. Um, do you think it's liquid or solid? Hmm. Yeah, excellent. It's liquid. And the the picture on the right, it's for solid or liquid? Yeah, it's for solid. Excellent. Thank you. So now. I have a question. What happens to something when it freezes? If I have some water and I put it inside the freezer, so it turns from a liquid to a solid. Yeah. Do you see the pictures? From water to ice cubes. Okay. So the next one. Oh, do you see the picture on the left? It's for ice cubes. Yeah, it's solid or liquid? Yeah, excellent. It's solid. And the picture on the right? Yeah. Solid or liquid? Yeah, excellent. It's for liquid. So, what happens to something when it melts? Oh, it turns from a solid to a liquid. So, if I have some ice and I just put it on my table and I left for one or two hours, then I came back, I found it, it's like water. Yeah, it's not the same. So, it turns from a solid to a liquid. Okay? So, now I have some, some pictures for you. Okay, the first one on the left. I have here some things that freeze and melt. The first picture, ice cube. The second one, ice pops. The third one, ice cream. Yeah, all these things that freeze and melt. Okay, so the next one. Oh, it's so delicious. Here, some things that freeze but don't melt. You know, the picture on the left, it's for frozen fruits. You see, it freeze, it freeze but don't melt. The picture on the right, it's for frozen vegetables. Yeah, frozen vegetables. It freeze but don't melt. So now frozen fruits and frozen frozen vegetables don't turn into liquid when they come out of the freezer. Okay, so we have some examples about things that melt after freezing like like ice cubes and ice pops and ice cream and things that freeze but don't melt like frozen fruits and frozen vegetables now ask your mom and search in your home about some things that can melt or not after freezing okay so i hope you enjoyed our lesson for today See you next lesson and have a good day. Bye.